Hey everyone! A while ago, I had a great conversation with a Bulgarian friend who shared with me that sometimes native speakers didn't understand what she was saying. One time, for example, she asked someone, where is Andy? And she couldn't understand why the woman she was talking to was so confused. When I told her the way she was pronouncing Andy, which in American English is pronounced with a vowel A as in cat, Andy sounded more like Andy, which some people use as short for underwear, she was astonished. This happens because the A sound in Bulgarian resembles more the cup sound A in English. This is the sound that comes in words like luck, cup, sun, etc. The truth is that even if a word is mispronounced, many people will still understand the intended meaning based on context. But sometimes folks who haven't met many non-native speakers struggle. Also, if several words in a row are mispronounced, the listener's brain will work harder to catch up. Guys, I'm Daniela, an English teacher and pronunciation coach, and in this video I'll discuss what you need to focus on in order to be a clear and confident English speaker. But wait, that's not all! After I tell you what to focus on, I'll discuss some sounds that are less important when it comes to clarity, so make sure to stay till the end. Just to clarify here, in order to be understood in English, it's not necessary to lose your accent, but you need to have a clear pronunciation. So let's go over some of the nuances in American pronunciation you should pay attention to. First on my list are vowels. English has a larger number of vowels than many other languages. For example, the vowels in the first syllables of the words apple and father are different, but many non-native speakers put them in the same category because they see the letter A. When it comes to vowels, there are two things to pay attention to, vowel quality and vowel length. The quality of the vowel you're trying to produce is determined by the position of your tongue, lips, and jaw. There are open and closed vowels. These are determined by how much your jaw is open. There are also front, central, and back vowels that depend on how you position your tongue and the mouth. There are many words in English that might confuse people if a vowel is mispronounced. For example, the vowel a in the word cat is an open front vowel because the jaw has to drop low and the back of the tongue pushes forward. The vowel a in the word cock, as it's pronounced in California where I live, is an open back vowel because although the mouth still needs to be quite open, the tongue pulls backwards. This pair of words, cat and cop, is an example of a so-called minimal pair, two words that differ only by one sound. In this case, the words differ by a versus a. If these two sounds are confused, the word changes its meaning. And there is another word that can be confused with these two. It's the verb cut that is pronounced with the mid-central vowel, also known as the cup sound. Another example of a confusing minimal pair is live and leave. Many non-native speakers who only have one E vowel in their native language might make these two words sound the same. But the correct pronunciation of live is with the lax E and leave is pronounced with a tense E. Another example of a minimal pair is full and fool. We have the lax U in full and the tense U in fool. But because many languages only have one U vowel, the correct pronunciation of these words may be challenging for some non-native speakers. But as I said, mastering the vowel quality is not enough. We also need to pay attention to the vowel length. Vowel length is the duration of the vowel. Unlike in some other languages, vowel length doesn't change the meaning of words, but it might make some words a little more clear. In English, we have three groups of vowels, short, long, and diphthongs. Short vowels are typically pronounced more quickly and with less emphasis. These are the lax e as in bit, e as in bed, a as in cat, the lax u as in put, the cup sound a as in cup, and the schwa e as in the first syllable of about. Long vowels are pronounced with a longer duration. We have the tense e as in sheep, u as in food, 
O is in the number four, A is in father, and in some states, O is in caught, the past tense of catch, although in other states, like in California, it's pronounced with A as in father, caught. The tense C sound is long when it's stressed, as in sheep, but short when it's unstressed as at the end of the word city. Lastly, we have diphthongs, which are compound vowel sounds in which the tongue moves from one vowel position to another within the same syllable. These vowels are also longer. We have five diphthongs in American English. I as in by, A as in bay, ow as in now, O as in no, oi, as in boy. People whose native languages don't have diphthongs may tend to mispronounce them. For example, some non-native speakers may mispronounce the word patient as patient, shortening the diphthong a to e. So pay attention to diphthongs. Also, even for vowels of the same quality, if the vowel comes before a voiced consonant, it's always slightly longer than before a voiceless consonant. For example, the quality of the vowel in the words bad and bat is identical, but the a in bad is slightly longer because it's followed by the voiced consonant d as opposed to the voiceless consonant Distinguishing between the length of vowels depending on their environment could be particularly useful for those who tend to devoice final consonants, like speaker of some Slavic languages, for example. Even if the final d in bad is devoiced, the word is still going to be clear if you slightly elongate the vowel. Let's move on to consonants. Believe it or not, the infamous th sound, both the voice, v as in these, and the voiceless th as in think is not the most important when it comes to clarity. There are other consonants that can introduce more confusion if mispronounced. For example, some Spanish speakers find it challenging to differentiate between sh as in shopping and ch as in chopping. Another minimal pair here. So if you want to say that you like shopping, but instead you say that you like chopping, the listener might think that you like chopping wood instead of buying new clothes. Some speakers also confuse v as in voice with b as in boy or w as in west. Spanish speakers, for example, might say berry instead of very, while some Russian and Hungarian speakers might say west instead of vest and vice versa. The R is another consonant to be aware of because if the tongue is not engaged enough, it might sound like w. For example, right can be mispronounced as white. Consonant clusters can be challenging as well. One of the most important things to remember when it comes to consonants is not to drop them. Some speakers whose native languages don't have consonants at the end of words tend to not pronounce them. If this is you, pay extra attention to this. For example, if you drop the final consonant d in the word card, it might sound like car, which is a different word. Next on my list is connected speech. Connected speech is merging vowels and consonants together in a way that there is no clear distinction between words. Understanding connected speech is important not only for your speaking, but for your listening and comprehension as well. Connected speech takes a little longer to master when it comes to speaking, but even if you don't link sounds the way native speakers do, you will still be able to understand what native speakers are saying if you know how connected speech works. Moving on to word stress. In English, there is a primary stress, secondary stress, and weak stress. One-syllable words only have one stress, but longer words might be a bit more challenging. For example, the word develop has three syllables. The primary stress falls on the second syllable, ve, while the first syllable, d, and the third one, lup, are unstressed. In some books, unstressed syllables are referred to as having a weak stress. But I've heard many non-native speakers put the primary stress of this word on the first syllable, making it sound like develop, which is incorrect. The correct pronunciation is develop. Another example is the word holiday. 
Here we have the primary stress on the first syllable, ha. The second syllable, l, is unstressed. And the last syllable, day, has a secondary stress, holiday. If your native language has a fixed stress like Polish or French, you might have a more challenging time noticing and remembering the primary stress in different English words. If this is an issue for you, just try not to speak too fast. Many people incorrectly think that speaking fast is a sign of fluency, but speaking in a clear way is the most important component of effective communication. Okay, now let's go over some of the sounds in American English that although important for self-confidence, won't compromise your clarity if you pronounce them slightly differently. Some of these sounds are the flap T, which is the R that comes between two vowels, like in the word water, the NG sound N at the end of words, and the TH sounds F and V to some extent. Let's start with a flap T. The truth is that many non-native speakers want to sound more American and are so hung up on the flap T that they sometimes compromise more important sounds. The flap T sounds more like a really quick trill in the form of R or D that many other languages have. My advice is not to spend so much time on it if you still need to work on other more important sounds. In English, the flap T is considered one of the allophones of the phoneme T when it comes between two vowels or between a vowel and an R, but only when T is followed by an unstressed vowel. So even though T in the word attach is between two vowels, it can be pronounced with a flap T because T is followed by a stressed vowel. We don't say arach, but attach. The fact that the flap T can be an allophone of T means that whether you pronounce the T as T or R doesn't change the meaning of the word. It's perfectly okay to say water and party instead of water and party. But if mastering the sound is extremely important to you, go for it. I know that many people instantly feel more confident when they learn how to say it. Next is the NG sound, N at the end of words like thinking, writing, speaking, etc. Because this is an exotic sound for many non-native speakers, they tend to pronounce the endings of these words like ink or ing instead of ing. To be honest, it took me a while to learn how to make that ng sound as well. If you still can't pronounce it, you just need time and practice. But I want you to know that you will be perfectly understood even if you say thinking instead of thinking. Now let's talk about the infamous TH sound. The TH gives the chills to many non-native speakers. Because the sound doesn't exist in many other languages, people tend to find the closest one from their native language that resembles it and substitute it with it. V and F are usually replaced by S and Z or T and D. Sometimes the voiceless TH F can be even substituted by F. Even though mastering the TH will inevitably make you feel more confident, it's not the most important one when it comes to clarity. There are certain words like thought, the past tense of thing, that if mispronounced may sound like sought or fought and confuse the listener, but there aren't many of them. Guys, clear pronunciation is super important not only for clarity, but also for the way others perceive you as a communicator. Unfortunately, there is still bias against certain non-native accents. But the number of people who speak English as a second language is increasing, and with it, tolerance for different accents will rise as well. So, in today's global world, clear pronunciation will be more appreciated than striving to get rid of your accent. How do you feel about your pronunciation in English? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. In return, I'll bring you more interesting and valuable content about English and learning languages overall. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.